we're going to call our uh, pre-agenda meeting to order, or our agenda meeting to order. Um, we got the invitation uh, invocation today by Wayne Acock, Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Barbara Acock. We'll need uh, approval of the minutes for March 1st. And then what we got on adjustments of the agenda. We do have adjustments of the agenda, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to everybody. Good morning. And, and I do apologize for having so many, uh, but a lot of this occurred on Thursday um, after our interviews with um, our engineering firm. Uh, so let me kind of go over that uh, fairly quickly for you. Uh, we would like to add these under consent. Uh, number one, or, or un under consent, we, we do this as number six. Approval of CDM Smith, Michael Baker International, Timmons Group, and Withers Ravenel as on-call engineering firms for Wayne County. Uh, again, all of these agreements would be with approval of our county attorneys um, uh, for final approval. Uh, but. We wanted to go ahead and get this moving um, and have your approval for that. Could I get a little explanation of why we are going to on-call services? That, by doing that, we basically <coughs> have, have gone through the, the RFQ process and, and saying that these engineering firms are qualified to do uh, jobs and, and projects for Wayne County. So we don't have to go through every time we do a project, uh, do an RFQ, which is a good thing. So I, I think we've also got a good variety of uh, engineering firms uh, from transportation to um, uh, solid ways to you know airports to you know water and sewer so so we have a, a good uh, bench uh, which to pull engineering services from okay anybody got any questions on that all right good okay and number two approval of contract with ECS for environmental testing at our new jail site uh, we do need some more testing, uh, soil, soil testing done uh, at the site on William Street uh, that this is separate from our contract with Mosley. That was not there when we bought that, when we got that one. My, my understanding is they, they need to do additional testing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So the compaction of the soil and that type of thing. Okay, I but, but again, was, that, that was out of the scope of what was. There's probably an environmental study done, but it was you can't do a study on the building until you know what a foundation is. Okay, all right. I just didn't want to buy another frog pond. No, no, sir. No, no, no frog pond. We already bought it. <laughs> no frog pond. Oh, y'all already bought it. Yeah, we already bought it. <laughs> uh, <coughs> then that would be number uh, seven. Uh, number eight, approval of CDM Smith for AIA work for Viable Utility Reserve Grant Program from NCDEQ uh, with final approval from uh, uh, review by our county attorney. And this is for the uh, AIA study looking at our asset inventory. Uh, as part of the grant as a distressed county, uh, we have to go through this process first. And, and again, this will be grant funded uh, through the state. And that's the study on the Genoa system. The, yeah, our AIA, our asset inventory. And then that'll be combined with our other distressed um, sewer systems within the county. Then that'll look at the regional aspect. Yeah, you can tell some engineers came up with his acronyms. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Any um, questions on that? No. All right. Okay. And then... Um, Approval of a uh, professional service contract with Withers Raffinell for Genoa system evaluation along with appropriate budget amendment. Um, in our facilities committee, one of the things we looked at was a asset predictor looking at uh, future sizing of our system, making sure that the lines are sized correctly moving forward. Uh, we wanted to do that before we began looking at any upgrades and any improvements to the system. 
Um, again, this happened on Thursday. We're still working on final contract with the attorney. Um, and also, I think the, and a, that would be with a budget amendment of approximately $28,000. Thank you. So, did you did you send me an email regarding the rest of the county? While it I made sure that that the northern part was included in that when we looked at at, at yes, sir. So it is included yes, in sir. that figure. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so that figure that you just said co covers that. I, I and again, this is an approximate figure again, but okay. but that was the last figure I believe that I, I've received. Yeah, but let's. But I think really the twenty eight is for the analyzing right. the Genoa system. Right. Uh, but the program is available when when right. they move to the northern right. section. So right. the so twenty eight thousand doesn't right. include. Analyzation in the north. I, I believe we did ask for it to include the northern and the southern section on that. Well, we asked for it, but yeah. we didn't. That, that, that they was, sent. Yeah, we, we did send that and ask. Okay, that. So, so it is included. We will make sure that it is. Okay. If it's not, we'll come back to you. All right. That's fair answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. um, and then we do have two budget amendments um, that we would do under. Um, uh, we'll walk on when Janice goes over the budget amendments. And that's that all it? I have. That's as it. As far as walk calls. Uh, and again, I apologize for so many at one time, uh, but last week was a real busy week, and there's some really pressing needs we have to move some projects forward. Hold on. If you'll be so kind as to pause for just a second so I can hand out the amendments that we have to do. Oh. Oh, um, and also, um, Craig, sir, I'm sorry. here, from Carol. Thank you. Oh, for you. Pause for a minute. Okay. Oh, well, Janice, would you get a hold of IT and have them work on that? Just working on it. <laughs> <laughs> is that quick enough? Yeah. It's like, is that quick enough? <laughs> 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 I wish I had a video. They got you on that. What he called that? Like, you, you, you call? Like a, you like a jack I'm the just box. that good. <laughs> and, and Carol is also passing you out a revised agreement for the SCIF funding with the community college uh, that's under new business uh, number one um, that Borden has worked on and has made some changes to. Uh, this is a little bit different than what's in your agenda packet. <clears throat> Sorry. And could we ask Borden what changes he recommended and was implemented? Well, what, what this sets is make sure that everybody understands that the college is expecting to spend about $12 million on a building. They're going to get about $9 million from the state they anticipate. First is in the budget that clearly they're going to get the two and a half to two something. The next one is in the budget for next year that's already been passed by the legislature, but is can be changed. And then the next two are anticipated to be in the following two years. But those last three are not guaranteed. And this just shows, makes you aware that if the legislature does not appropriate those funds or if they change the amount that's in the uh, but next fiscal year, that the county will eat the extra money. So basically, if they don't pony up the money, we got to. Right, you're saying that you're going to give them the money and expect them to pay you back. If they don't get the money from the legislature, they cannot pay you back. But they will. And won't pay you back. I'm sorry. But it's, it's, it's anticipated. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the appropriations are going to all the community colleges in the state. So it is very unlikely, in my opinion, that they are going to not give it to them. There would be too much 
But I felt like that y'all needed to know that, that this is not something that's absolutely guaranteed. So has anybody got any questions on this agreement uh, from the standpoint of advancing the funds and the opportunity or, or chances that we may have to actually not get reimbursed for it. And, and, and let's clarify now, they may not even have to use this money because the project is not going to be built overnight and, and they will draw, draw a lot of it. And, you know, if the project takes a couple of three years to build, by then it, it may not even play into it. Is that over, over time, right? Over time, right. that, that because, because they, they, right. they don't they don't need this money up front. It's going. Right. It, How long is the project going to take? Two, two years. Two years. years. Two to three years. Two years. So they already have the one approved for this year. Last year, rather. My understanding this was. Year, my understanding was they've had two years approved. Two years. Well, but but there is a. They could change. Oh, they could change that in the short session. I don't okay. think they ever will, but they could. Okay. All right. And it, of course, could give them some more right. instead of what they've already promised. They could give them some more. Well, that's, 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 that's the intent of the college is to, all 58 of them is to go for more. <laughs> and, and Dr. Pfeiffer and um, Derek Hunter and Craig Folk will be here as well. So Craig's here. Craig's here. <laughs> All right, we kind of got ahead of ourselves here. Um, let's go back to our uh, agenda and special presentations now. Okay. Uh, number one, we'll have service pins, uh, employee service pins. Uh, number two, we have an, a motion to adopt resolution 22-12, a resolution honoring Kate Daniels for years of service to Wayne County and the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I think our vice chair has a the resolution in front of him? Yes, sir. I do. Uh, then number three, motion to approve April as Children and Families Month proclamation. Uh, we do have someone who will be here to read that um, as well. Um, number four, presentation on We Dig It Ag Days by County Extension Director Kevin Johnson. And then number five, uh, we will introduce our new travel and tourism director, uh, Amanda Justice. So, okay. any questions on any of that? Okay. Um, then under unfinished business, uh, number one, possible motion to proceed with design schematics on the proposed Wayne County fueling station. Uh, and appropriate budget amendment. Uh, again, we've been working on this uh, with facilities. Um, I appreciate the work that uh, Commissioner Gurley has done on this. Uh, looking at a fueling station over at our facility site on Clingman. We've had it rezoned. Uh, we're working on site plans. We're working on uh, what size tanks we need, um, but it, it's one of those things we need uh, formal approval from the Board of Commissioners to move forward with this project. One, one note on that, we were discussing the other day the, the difference in the weight of gasoline and diesel fuel. Gasoline weighs six pounds to the gallon. Diesel fuel weighs 6.9 to 7.1, depending on the time of the year because the, the weight of diesel fuel changes during the with temperature. Hmm. And if I might um, uh, go back to item two under special presentations, I'm going to ask the entire board to come down and actually have a photo with Kate. Um, the Chamber of Commerce in Wayne County has really lost a valuable asset there, and I mm -hmm. think we need to all come down and actually uh, honor her. So uh, at that presentation, we will ask us to go down and actually have a photo. Okay? Um, appointment committee. <laughs> we definitely need to make sure that we approve that. I mean, have that appointment committee report. <laughs> I think we overlooked that last time. Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, and now on to consent agenda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, number one is budget amendments, and uh, Allison is at her finance conference, and I appreciate Janice sitting in for her. 
Okay, your first one is number 334, and this is for the Sheriff's Office. This is to appropriate insurance um, reimbursements for a vehicle that was damaged in the amount of $5,319.74. Can we hold on just a minute, and let's pull up these uh, budget amendments. I know where. No problem. Okay, I think that's your first one, is that correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions on that one? No, I'm good. The next one's number 335, and this is also from the Sheriff's Office for $11.38, <laughs> and this is to appropriate um, controlled substance tax that has been received. That's about two gallons of gas. <laughs> Today. Yeah. Thank you. Next one's number 336. <clears throat> this is from the facilities department. Um, he is moving money to a capital equipment outlay so that he can buy a taller lift to purchase this lift so we don't have to continue to rent one. Uh, we will be selling a smaller lift and listing on gov deals once this one arrives. This is for $22,800 and he's taking these funds out of other departmental lines. And that's going to the Maxwell Center, right? We, we don't, the current system lift will not reach the ceiling to change light bulbs. James Chapman pay for that? Uh, with, it's coming out of facilities. Okay. The next budget amendment is number 343, and this is from the Solid Waste Department, and this is to appropriate funds for the purchase of a knuckle boom truck for the purpose of cleaning up illegal dumps. This is in the amount of $189,800. We're taking these funds out of the um, solid waste as fund balance. Back, back up just a little bit. Back up? Yeah, back up. Okay. There you go. It, we had the discussion among staff about, you know, putting it as far as their CIP, but regardless, we would be taking it from their um, uh, their fund balance because they are an enterprise fund and, and they do have plenty of funds uh, in their fund balance um, in the solid waste fund. So it, it is a specific need that we have, uh, again, especially for legal dumping. Uh, they've been doing it by hand, but it really needs to be that we can get a knuckle boom truck, go out there, just pick it up and put it in the back of the truck. This is, this is a perfect example of tax dollars being spent because of sorry people. <laughs> well, <laughs> so let, let me ask you a question. What's, so that's the enterprise fund. The Maxwell Center's an enterprise fund. Why is one paying for one out of their budget and the other one's not? Out of their fund balance? Um, because Maxwell has no fund balance. Mm -hmm. Say so again. Maxwell Center has no fund balance. We treat it as an enterprise fund, but they have no fund balance since they've started only four years ago. Okay. And I would assume that that lift would be used in other areas besides it, just the it, it, Well, it, it, yeah. That's the reason it's being bought because of the high ceilings. Right. <coughs> it was a facility. Already. Yeah. Already. I know she just said for the Maxwell Center. It was written on the thing. Yeah. So. Well, and, and we wanted to clarify because it's not the same lift that we rented for the lights out at the uh, jet port. Okay. Next. Next is number 344, and this is for gateway transportation. This is to appropriate um, reimbursement of $225 to pay for postage. Okay. Next one is number 345. This is for the Arts Council, and this is to appropriate reimbursement for the rental of a copier machine. Okay. The next one is number 348. And this is for um, social services. They're appropriating additional um, funds for Share the Warmth program in the amount of $2,601.93. Okay. Number 351 is from WCDA in the amount of $48,167.50. 
and this is to anticipate an appropriate pass through grant funds from the North Carolina Department of Com Commerce to Michael Aram Incorporated for Project NIST. Any questions on that? Okay. The next one um, is number 367, and this is from the Social Services Department. There's, there's one in front of you rather than on this right. This. All right, that's 367. Yes, sir. Okay. This is in the amount of $434. 440. $34,000. Thank you. <laughs> $575. And this is to transfer funds to cover Veritas monthly expenses for the remainder of the current fiscal year. And, and again, if you remember, that's the company uh, Social Services chose to do child support. Right. So uh, those funds are coming from um, lap salaries. So when did they start? <coughs> They have started managing the program on March 1. And they will actually have everybody under them May 1. So, so we're still paying the payroll um, and expenses up until May 1? Yes. But they are actually... We're, we're paying payroll for those people who were county employees they are hiring other people as we speak okay. you know, were very, uh, so it's a two-month transition period yes sir okay all right so are they have they decided where they're going are they going to stay to stay where they're at in our buildings are they going to rent or what's the deal with my understanding that they are going to stay where they are now and then when you finish your new DSS Health Department, they like planning to move out of that. Up and up. Right. All right, any other questions? Okay, and next. Uh, your last budget amendment is number 371, and this is from the Human Resources Department to um, appropriate $10,000 for the summer intern program, and we're taking these funds out of the contingency for the merits that wasn't, wasn't used for the merits. And this allows us to go ahead and move forward and, and hopefully get our uh, director on board and start, you know, really moving forward the process. And, and I appreciate the work that Ginger's done and Commissioner Williams has done to this point, um, uh, but it's a lot of work. And But we've, we've got Craig Vogt in the back we're going to be working with, so um, um, once we get the, the coordinator, we'll be able to just begin moving forward and, 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 and make it right. Well, we recognize we did kind of strain that by uh, pushing this forward for this year, but we felt like we wanted to go ahead and get at least an initial program in right. this, this summer's program. Yes, sir. We can refine it over the winter going into next year. So thank you for the extra effort. He, she, I, I really hats off to the work that Ginger's done on this. All right, next. All right. Uh, so that's all of our budget amendments. Uh, number two, motion to adopt resolution 2022-13, resolution awarding service weapon to Sergeant Joseph Borquist upon his retirement. And we have that resolution in your packet. And Borden has the dollar. And Borden has <laughs> the dollar. <laughs> and then number three, Motion to approve the county's response to the auditor's findings, recommendations, and physical matters from the June 30th, 2021 uh, audit. Uh, again, that's on pages 35 through 38. A again, as part of the process now with the audit, we have to respond back to how we are dealing uh, with deficiencies that were found in the audit. Questions? Okay, number four, approval to designate the director of DSS, the county attorney, and the staff attorney to be notified when the county is ordered to pay for juvenile evaluation or treatment. And I'll have Borden explain that. The legislature changed some of the uh, 
juvenile law, delinquent law particularly, in saying that the court decided that the juvenile and the juvenile's parents needed mental health, that they would, uh, that they should first look to see if there was any insurance, private insurance, secondly, any Medicaid, and if, thirdly, look to East Point, and if none, if they could not find money from any of those three, they can look to the county to pay for it. And uh, it, there is a provision that if the court is going to consider that, that they have to notify the county. And so it was my belief that they needed to be put on notice that if they were going to try to do something like that, that the county get the notice so we would be able to appear and try to tell them that there were other avenues other than county tax dollars. Okay, any questions? Is this basically another mandated unfunded? Yes, sir. And, and it just, it is my belief that sometimes they think it's easier just to order the county to pay for it instead of really looking to see if there isn't somebody else that's got some they, funds. They call it passing the book. Yes, sir. And I thought that it was important that the county be notified and have an opportunity to stir to East Point. <laughs> Anywhere other than out. <laughs> okay. All right, next. Um, number five, motion to establish a public hearing on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022 at 5.15 p.m. And if the board will remember, our next meeting will be our night meeting. Uh, in the commissioner's meeting room in the Wayne County Courthouse Annex, uh, the purpose of the hearing is to receive public comments regarding a proposed shooting range ordinance. And a copy of that ordinance uh, is in your, your packet. And, and again, this has been reviewed by our attorneys and also planning uh, and also the uh, NRA. So. Any comments? Okay. Um, and then uh, we did discuss the items that we added to consent. Uh, I can go back over those again if you want. But no, we're good. You're good? Okay. Anybody uh, got any questions on those additions? Okay. Okay. Uh, number, uh, under new business, number one, discussion approval of Wayne County to be funding source for two years uh, of the four years for the SCIF funding for the new Center for Industrial Technology and Engineering building at Wayne Community College and appropriate budget amendment. Uh, again, uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, uh, Borden has made some minor changes to the agreement that was in the agenda packet uh, that we have handed out to you. Dr. Pfeiffer, uh, Craig is here, and I think Derek Hunter will be here as well uh, to talk about the project and, and the specific ass of, of basically ensuring uh, that the county's kind of, uh, we're, we're their bank, making sure that they get the SCIF funding uh, over the four years from the state. I suppose the only question I have is at what point would the college actually draw on these funds? When they need them, they're not, as Wayne said, they're not going to want all the money now and they haven't, haven't even got a contract signed yet. So it pretty well uh, gives that uh, wording in, in the agreement that in regards to when they draw on the funds. Yes. Okay. All right. Good enough. And if the state funds come through, they won't ever have to draw on it. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and then county managers report, board of commissioners committee reports, closed session, and adjourn. And we definitely are going to have a closed session. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, anything else we need to talk about on our agenda? Not that I'm aware of. All right, then we're going to, uh, is there any matters that we can take up on our closed session? 
at this point. I think everything's going to be rather lengthy. So we will recess right. until uh, 9 o'clock. All right. All right. Thanks, sir.